Hello, I'm Ken Harris, and I'm going to show you a little island scene. Uh, the tools I'm using, a large or medium-sized knife and a small one, uh, a fan brush, two detail brushes, a fine and a little bit coarser one, and the main brush I'm painting with is about one and a half centimetres wide. Uh, the colour we start off with first is, um, is going to be uh, a little bit of pink, and uh, I'm going to take a little white and uh, a bit of red, and a tiny bit of orange. That's just a little too bright. We'll knock that back a bit. And we'll run this into the lower sky. I'm going to use a tiny bit of medium on my brush, but the board has already got a very thin coat of medium on it, so bear that in mind when you're doing your painting. If you put a thin coat of medium on your board, you see how the paint spreads just so easily. No hassle at all. I'm going to wash that brush and just put that paint up the top to use perhaps at a later stage and I'm going to take some blue, a little white first and then a little bit of phthalo blue. I'm using phthalo blue in this particular case and we could have him just a little darker little medium again and I'm going to paint the top of the painting. Now I'm using basically a crisscross stroke um, as opposed to a stroke that you would use if you were painting the house. Um, we don't want to develop that effect as if it's just a, a straight wall you're painting. A little bit of a crisscross stroke makes it look very interesting when you have it hanging on the wall and you walk past it, you get a little bit of light reflecting off these um, various strokes on the board. Just bring that down gently, gently into the pink. And we'll come back to this in a few minutes. We could have just a little more up here. About what we want. Now I'm going to take a little more white and with the dirty brush, I haven't washed the brush, I'm going to run a paler blue through here. Now we have a hill here. A lot of students have the habit of painting up over the hill. Don't do that. Um, th there's a great tendency to do it, but avoid doing that because we don't want to another blue hill in the distance in the sky. It's about what we need. Now I'm going to wash the brush again and make sure you get the turps out of your brush every time. And I'm going to run up some clouds here. I'm going to extend the pink up into the blue keep the paint nice and thin and we'll run that little bit of cloud formation up over the blue and also just fuse the the pink into the blue like so again I'll just wash the worst of the paint out of the brush and go back to that blue and I'm going to run um, a little bit of water in just here. Now in this particular case it's a bit difficult to use a crisscross stroke because it's only a narrow band of water that's running in there. But that's about what we need. You could use the tiniest little bit of yellow green in, uh, I'm sorry, a little bit of viridian in there too. 
if you so desire, just introduce a tiny bit of viridian and white. And I'm going to put the majority of this blue up the top of the board, but we just need a little bit for that mountain range. And I'm going to add a little red to it so that it swings towards a uh, purple. And that's about the colour we want, maybe a little bit. It's funny, it's not until you get it on, that's ideal. It's not until you get it on the board that you can clearly see what the colour is. Now, we're going to stroke this hill away in the distance. A little bit of a hill on the other side of the water. Just gently, gently stroke it away. It could be just a tiny bit paler. Just taking back a tiny bit. Stroke it away at roughly a 45 degree angle. And that's about what we want. If you want to define one bit of the hill more than the other, you can come back here and make this one a little darker perhaps, or, or this guy and get a little bit of more texture in it, but that's entirely up to you. Going to just re-establish where that water is again. And in the, just make the paint a wee bit thicker there. You could, while you're there, just run a little bit of highlight on that hill and in various spots along the, the mountain range, you can put a few little bits of highlight very gently. Don't overdo it. We don't want it standing out too much. Just a hint of light on the hill itself. Now to wash that brush again and we'll run the sand in. Again I'm going to pick up this blue and put it up the top here. This purpley colour we just put in to the side as well. And we'll take a bit of white again and a little yellow ochre and we'll run the, the beach in. I find that yellow ochre and white is a pretty good colour for beach scenes. However, uh, there are a lot of people that say Naples yellow is an excellent colour and I suggest you try them out. Um, Naples yellow is, is certainly an ideal colour but it gives a nice effect anyway. There's a projection of land comes out here. A little sandbar. Uh, a little bit of land coming out on the sandbar. So we just pull that away gently, gently, gently there. And creep around here. And this sand is coming right back here and right back down to here and then we've got some vegetation of course goes on top of that now we need a little green to establish where the the land is so I'm going to take a little Payne's grey and orange, Payne's grey and orange and I'm going to establish where that land is and I'm going to use a fan brush to do that because the fan brush allows me to get right into the tip of the land. I'm using a little light green there too. And we just work that around there, back out here, and it's running around to where that water is. Very easy little painting to do, this guy. 
Now, I suggest you get it darker as you come towards the uh, foreground. And you can get shadow coming in underneath here. Just a little bit of texture in the ground, terribly important. You could change colour to do that to a burnt sienna or something like that, just to create that bit of texture in the ground. And uh, there's a, a really grassy little outcrop in here. You need that nice and dark to get that in. Remember that grass has shadow underneath it as well. All grass throws shadow. So get a little bit of texture and shadow in underneath that. And there's a, a line of small palm trees over here, uh, which has got texture underneath it. So we'll just get a little bit of rubbish under those. Very important to get texture into ground. Um, you may look at the beach or a paddock or a field, whatever, uh, from a distance and you think um, that it's just perfectly plain and there's no undulations or it's, it's exactly the same colour all the way. But that is, I've never seen a field or sand or anything else that has uh, the texture exactly the same all the way. You look at it closely and you'll see slight little undulations that throw tiny, tiny little shadows. And if you look at it closely, those little shadows are all over the place. You don't, at first, you don't notice it. It's like trees. When you squint your eyes, you look at a tree without squinting your eyes, it just looks green, green, green. But you squint your eyes and look at it, it looks black in the centre of it. So how different it looks when you look at it closely. And that's how it is on most beaches. Um, look at it closely, you'll see that there's bits of seaweed, there's little sticks, there's goodness knows what there, that you never saw before. And getting texture into the ground like that is very important. Now, we have some trees, small um, trees coming up over here. Uh, they're coconut trees, so I'm going to run a smallish trunk up for these guys. I'm using a little bit of uh, a little bit of burnt sienna and the green to do that, and I'm going to come back and run a little bit of foliage on these guys. It could be darker, but we're going to go to a break, and after the break, we'll come back, and um, with a bit of darker paint, we'll continue with that. So I'll see you after the break, so it'll give you a few minutes to catch up. Thank you. Okay, folks, I hope you've caught up and ready to go. Um, I'm going to make the um, paint just a wee bit darker. Uh, just add a tiny bit more uh, paint grey. And uh, we'll run this foliage in on this guy again. And what a difference it makes, that little bit of paint grey in there. And a little bit on this guy here. And we'll come back to those trees uh, because we have some again on the other side. And um, we need a little bit of um, um, burnt sienna to finish them off. But I'm going to run little foliage in here on this projection of land and a little bit of green and I'm going to use the other end. I've sharpened up the, uh, the end of this brush, ideal for running little trunks up that are insignificant. And I'm going to run up uh, some trees in this area.
when you run these trees in, always get the last little bit vertical. Because if you don't, it's very hard to put the, uh, the foliage on the tree. Little burnt sienna and a little green. And we have another guy coming up here. Fairly big one, this one. It's about where we want it. Now, before you put foliage in on a tree like this, just make sure that you don't have the paint too thick in the, in the sky there, in the clouds. If you have the paint a little on the thick side, just trim off the tiniest bit. As it happens, it, that, that the foliage will go in on that without any trouble at all. So we run some uh, frongs in like so. And uh, just trim those down there, this guy here. Could have been just a tiny bit darker. I didn't, uh, we will darken the paint a tiny bit. It's better to have the paint too dark than too light. You can always over highlight it. what we want and a little bit on this guy here and they're going in without any hassles at all all right I'm going to wipe the worst of the paint off but I'm not going to wash it and I'm going to pick up a tiny little bit of of burnt sienna and run in a little bit of foliage underneath as if there's a couple of dead frongs. You can have a dead throng on the ground here if you want to as well. Same over here on these guys. And I'm going to just highlight some of these now with a little bit of yellow green. Strange that it may seem we have a tendency to put quite long trunks on these trees but the latest uh, coconut trees are only a very short tree. In fact I've actually seen them with fruit on the ground. The, the, the nuts are actually touching the ground. The coconuts are actually touching the ground. Um, and uh, that new variety is certainly coming into its own. But we all associate them with longish trunks. Like this guy, I'm going to add just the tiniest bit of yellow uh, to some of these, just on the left hand side. And we'll run around here with it. Uh, this is cadmium yellow. I, I normally use lemon yellow, but uh, I simply don't have any lemon yellow readily available. and. And this uh, cad yellow, I must say, I think actually does a better job than the, than the lemon yellow. Now, we'll go into the distance and I quite often use a brush to steady my hand, like so, and I'm going to put in some boats in the distance here and all you need is a few little dots of the color that you feel you want the boat to look and then uh, put a little sail on it like so same with this guy here amazing how effective that is with the boats way in the distance. You can if you want to get a tiny bit of reflection under there because it's certainly not a running sea and you would get somewhat of a reflection underneath them. And uh, on the 
bank here, I'm going to put a couple of, of dates in here. We've got one in here. And another guy perhaps in here. We could perhaps put another guy in here. <coughs> and put something on them to warm them up a bit perhaps. You could run a little pink to highlight the tops of them. And incidentally, the rougher you get these, the better they will look. And they're certainly rough. Now underneath the boats, you need the tiniest little bit of shadow. So use a little blue to get a little shadow underneath them. You can pick up a little bit of the brown, but blue is the appropriate colour. And we need a little sail on them, or a little mast, whatever. And I find the easiest way to do that is just simply run a small knife up and run a bit of a sail away like so, hanging there. The same on this guy here, about there, and just let the sail hang loose there. And this guy likewise, there's no need to have it at the left hand end of the boat, you could have it on the right hand end. And that's about all we need as far as uh, the sail effect goes, but we do need to darken up this foreground so that it pushes the eye into the painting. And I'm going to darken this up along here and over here, get some longish grass in here. We could put um, we could put an old lump of wood, take a little bit of burnt umber, burnt sienna, and we could just put an old log or something laying here, a bit of highlight on top of it, a little bit of pink there, you could put a little blue underneath it for shadow. And texture in general in the ground is what we're after. Shadow under, put a little shadow under everything you, you run into this area. Little shadow in under here. We could run a little shadow underneath that tree. And we need to flick up a bit of rubbish around the trunks there. Um, there is another tree, another big old tree coming up in this area here. We'll run him right up through that boat. Run him up a little higher. Now you can, if you want to segment the trunk, just scratch it in like so, to give the impression that there's a segmentation on the trunk, and rough is the order of the day. And you can get another group of foliage on this guy. We can make him a little bigger than the other ones. And we'll get a little highlight on him. If you have if you have the, the, the foliage dark, then if you haven't got the right shape in the tree or you're not happy with it, it's amazing what you can do with the highlight. You can use the highlight to really reshape the tree entirely. Um, and um, it always pays you to to bear that in mind uh, with with these uh, with this type of tree. Get a little bit of rubbish underneath him here. We'll flick up a little bit of grass, a little bit of something really dark there. And that's a really easy little painting to have a go at. It's got a bit of action in it. And uh, 
I'm sure that you'll get a lot of fun out of, out of doing it. Uh, you could introduce a tiny bit of grass in places like this. If you want to roughen up the surface a bit, you can use a little bit of burnt sienna in there as well, runnel it, but remember, shadow underneath it, very important. And uh, you can come and go a lot with this painting. I mean, you don't have to have these trees here. You can move them over the other side or whatever. Um, but the really important thing with this painting is to get uh, texture in the ground. That is by far the most important single thing about the painting. If you just painted yellow ochre and white across here, put a few trees in and boats, and you don't get this texture in, then believe me, um, you will uh, very much regret it. I'm going to sign it down here in the bottom right-hand corner. And I'm going to run a frame around that and see how it looks. Well, that's a nice little, that's a nice little painting for you to have a go at. A great painting for the kids to to amuse themselves with and get them away from the computer, and I bet you can't. <laughs> but remember, the first brush stroke is the most difficult and the last one is the most satisfying. You enjoy your painting, bye.